It was just a few weeks ago that I made a video on this channel discussing my newly acquired Pelagos FXD. And in the video, I discuss everything about why I love the Pelagos collection so much, and what's one of my most favorite watches in the line. But I also made a point saying that I believed that the FXD would be the template and the prototype for the next generation of the Pelagos collection. Now that we have seen the Pelagos 39mm launched, I could say that I'm a little bit disappointed that my prediction was correct. And let me tell you why. This is the new Pelagos, yet it is not just another Pelagos. It is very much a Pelagos, but it's different. You can use it as a Pelagos, of course, or you can use it completely otherwise. Now that is the opening transcript to the unveiling of this new release. And if you are as confused about it as I am, then well, we have something in common. And I think this is going to be a very divisive watch to say the least. And even though on the outside it looks relatively the same as the original Pelagos, it is a severe departure from the original. Now this unveiling happened completely out of left field. I was just about to record a video on vintage chronographs when this happened. So when we're talking about an unscripted video, this is pretty much as good as it gets. You're going to get my raw reaction about this watch and what I think. So this is generation three of the Pelagos collection. And what we're seeing now is a far more stripped down and simplified variation of the previous model. This watch is going to divide opinions in so many ways because it does many things right, but it also removes and retracts many things that came to define this watch. And ultimately that is the core argument with this piece. The specifications, the watch is now 39 millimeters. It's been brought down from 42. It has 11.8 millimeters thick. It has a full titanium case and bracelet with a longer T-fit clasp that I think was made to be more of a professional attachment. And from what we've been seeing, this watch now has a brushed bezel insert and a brushed dial. Now aesthetically on the outside, this watch looks phenomenal. I mean, the proportions are bang on. They've improved so many small things like they've integrated the new crown guard and the new crown, which looks far more professional, looks stunning. The bezel knurling is more accentuated. The dial has been shifted further up to the top of the crystal. It uses the new in-house caliber boasting a 70 hour power reserve, but gone is the date complication. Gone is the helium escape valve. Gone is the three dimensional chapter ring. And my gut reaction when I saw this watch was that I thought the Tudor had Black Bay-ified, is that even a word, Black Bay-ified the Pelagos line. Let us go back in time and define what the Pelagos is. Why has it been one of their most successful properties? Of course, now we see that the Black Bay has been getting all the fanfare and I think Tudor is trying to catch that wave with the Pelagos collection. But this watch was always created to be the professional watch. This was their seed weller. This was the piece that could go to insane depths and be used in all environments. What makes the Pelagos collection great is it has this air of experimentalism, this prototypical form that doesn't feel fully finalized just yet. Try and say that three times. And while yes, on the outside, I think we can all say that this piece now looks beautifully refined and hits every point that the enthusiast wants. I mean, 39 millimeters is great. The bracelet, the taper, all of those little details will make a huge difference. But on the inside, I think that the primary USP that came to define the Pelagos collection in the early days has been lost. Now, why do I say all of this? The way I've seen the Pelagos over the years, it's an example of a watch that embraces experimentation. It never fully adapts. And from it, we've seen left-hand drive variations. We've seen red date complications. We've seen an incredible clasp and adjustment system. And then with the FXD, the experimentation continues. Fixed spring bars, beautiful blue dial and bezel, a fully graduated insert that glows like a torch. And even though a lot of these ideas were odd and strange, they all still managed to communicate that these were professional oriented instruments. I look at this new watch from the collection and I feel like it doesn't scream professional anymore. Why do I say that? Well, the marketing and advertising around it basically says that you can wear it sunbathing or in the pool. You can wear it on the dance floor. You can wear it while driving your car. They're trying to orientate this new watch around the casual wearer, the fashionista, the beachgoer, and not the worker. And there is a strong divide in this area that I think is going to affect how people see the new generation of the Pelagos. Because yes, it boasts a titanium case, it's incredibly well built, it has so much great technology surrounding it. But now I believe it lacks an X factor that truly made this watch otherworldly and so different. So why have they done this? Why have they gone down the route of a safe design? 
I think they just want to deviate away from the Black Bay collection, which has been their most important property. And from the very beginning, we were asking for this watch and now we have it. But we've now also got to think about those who want to wear this watch at 42 millimeters and not at 39 mil. Now I'm going to put on my tin hat and critique one element to this watch that doesn't make a lot of sense, especially if we are looking back into the archives and observing classic Rolex designs and where this originated from, the red line of text. Why did the earlier generation have a red line of text? Well, it was mirroring the Rolex Seedweller. This new 39 millimeter model is following in the footsteps of the 1680, which was known as the Red Sub, but that had a date. Or is this watch trying to imitate the Seedweller 43? Well, that watch has a date. How about is it trying to imitate the 1665, which was the first double red Seedweller? Well, that watch also had a date. The red used on a dial of a model like this with crown guards generally denotes a date complication. This piece does not have one. The new text arrangement has been interestingly done. Pelagos 200 meters chronometer. And you notice how different it looks next to the FXD. This one has far more linearity where the FXD has an almost diamond shape to the way the text was done. And then it's looking to the dial and the bezel choices, this brushed finish. Partly why the Pelagos appealed to a lot of people, me included, was the full matte finish. The fact that nothing was reflective. And in a professional sense, you don't want a reflective dial or a reflective bezel on a watch. So this is yet another departure away from function and more aimed at being something fashionable. Now don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful watch. This is the mecca. This is the epitome of what the Pelagos should have been many years before. But I think along the way they have lost the language that came to define this watch. And as a result, we now have a piece that has been you know, denuded and stripped down to being just a simple daily wearer that has a few quirks, a few flashy elements. But on the whole, it comes across kind of generic. I feel like Tudor's approach with the 39 was to create a watch in this category that was going to be as unoffensive as possible. I have no doubt that people are going to go crazy for these pieces because it hits every single mark that we've wanted. Thin case, great size, excellent proportions. But along the way, I feel like this Pelagos is being muddled up with the current collection that Tudor now offers. And it's now just portraying itself as another watch with nothing truly special about it with no true defining substance around it that the earlier ones did. It's also crazy to think that over the years, I've created renders and designs of this watch that look exactly like this. If I had to go back into the archives, I'm sure I'd be able to find a design that looks almost identical to this release. But now that I see it in the flesh, I feel like something is missing. I feel like it's, it's missing something that's going to grab you and hold your attention for far longer. With all that said, with the pedantic point of view out of the way, you are getting an exceptional watch here that's priced extremely well. Full titanium, manufacturer caliber, an exceptionally good size, an everyday wearer in every sense of the word. And my only real gripe about this watch is I think it's missing something. It's missing excitement. It's missing a date complication or a fully graduated bezel. You know, something that steps away from that generic Submariner shadow. And a good question to ask, would I be interested in trading in my FXD for this new model? No, I wouldn't. I prefer the blue. I prefer the way the typeface was done. I love the quirks like the fully graduated bezel, the skin diver style case, the fixed bars, all of these things, these unique selling points that came to define the Pelagos collection, the earlier models, I think is lost here in favor of simplicity, streamlining, and making it far more palatable. No doubt it's going to be greatly appealing and I think people are going to love them. And I can't wait to hear the testimonials about this watch as time goes by. This truly has the potential of being Tudor's greatest modern dive watch to date. But where the many generations of the Pelagos has managed to ride this line between safe and experimental, I feel like, and I think many others will agree that this watch feels too safe. But this is still a cracking watch, and I think it has been so well put together. The beginning of a new chapter for the Pelagos name.